Aloha, everybody. Welcome to Facebook Live today. Today is January 23rd, 2019, and I appreciate you guys uh, jumping on board. Um, we'll wait a few minutes while we get uh, until, hey, Jenny, <laughs> you win the prize for the first one in. Terry Workman, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. A lot to talk about today. Uh, not a lot of items, but the items that we're going to talk about is quite uh, detailed and quite complex and quite controversial. So, uh, hey, aloha, Cousin Rick from Oahu. Patsy, of course. Hey, Monday uh, was Patsy's birthday. It wasn't just Martin Luther King's day. It was also Patsy Raposo's day. So happy birthday uh, to my wife, Patsy, who's right here. Hey, Francine, thank you, and Belinda, and Troy, and Larry. Uh, thank you. Thank you for joining us. So, yeah, Patsy's here. She's my um, technician that, that makes sure everything is working. Ilona. Wallace Nishimura, thank you guys for joining us. Dominic Boro, wow. What's up, Dominic? Man, I see your post on Facebook, man. You make me jealous. I like move to the mainland, work for you. Anyway, Raylene Wa'alani and Jayla and Terry and Fred and Pris and everybody else. Uh, Palinapa, Kaohelao Li'i, my pops, dad, Tom Raposo, all the way from Seattle, Washington. Hey, Dad, thanks for joining us again. Sandy, my sister, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Um, this is becoming quite a show. Uh, just, uh, you know, I'm working on, I, I said this before, I work, hey, Terrence. Why, Ale, Ale, prayers going out for you, Pops. Hope he's doing well. Um, Renee Kawakami, hey, how's it going? Long time no see. Karen Okamoto, thank you guys for joining us. I've been talking about this other platform I've been working looking at Zoom or possibly uh, Google Hangouts. <clears throat> and I will be uh, probably starting that in February where we'll do some live. All of these uh, Facebook Lives now are going over to my uh, YouTube page. So uh, if you want to catch up on some of the older ones and the spontaneous ones that I'll be doing uh, on uh, YouTube, just uh, get over to uh, YouTube. Just search for Mel Raposo, find my page, and uh, all the videos will be stored there. So if you want to. If you're bored and uh, really bored and you, you want to go laugh a little and uh, just head over to my YouTube page and you can go ahead and uh, catch up on some of the old ones. I will be doing some spontaneous ones, like I say. Um, hey, Glenn. Aloha, Glenn. Stella. Shailane. Um, yeah, so using probably, like, like I said, either Google Hangouts or uh, Zoom, where I'll be able to bring on uh, guests and, and, and share uh, share the mic and the camera with, with someone else uh, remotely. So uh, stay tuned for that. And I'm hoping that uh, uh, we can start that in February. Still trying to figure out the – I'm going to be using one of the two. Uh, I'm playing around with them now. And it looks like probably Hangouts uh, because it's free. Um, Zoom has some limited capability. So anyway, we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. Leo, Roland, Vitos, Elena. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So um, I know uh, – Heavy duty week in the last week. Uh, everybody's talking about, I mean, we got a government shutdown. We got some heavy duty issues, the normal issues that we always have. But um, the big, big talk in the town right now is the Super Bowl and the Rams uh, going over to take on the Patriots. And, <clears throat> um, but, but the, the Ram Saints game, the, the, the blown call, uh, getting a lot of attention on the news, nationwide news, local news, ESPN. Facebook, YouTube. Hey, Sarah and Sterling, thanks for joining us. Uh, and Robert Ford. Wow, another blast from the past. Bobby Ford. Yeah, former KPD officer as well. Anthony Mangan. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, yeah, uh, what do you guys think? That's end up. Hang on, I'm going to be reading some of the comments, which I think you all can see. I don't know. And the Patriots winning the Super Bowl. Uh, uh, Relani, I mean, uh, Raylene, uh, go back sleep. Did you see the Rams' offense? Did you see their offense against a very, very, very tough Saints defense? Well, I, unfortunately, your Patriots' defense is a little soft. So I think that the Rams are going to just <clears throat> uh, run the ball. Uh, you know, I, I will say this. Tom Brady is probably the best quarterback of all time. I mean, it's a different game today, I understand. And that's that argument. Well, you know, Steve Young, Joe Montana, all of these guys, uh, if they had played in today with today's rules and today's uh, game, it would be different. Well, maybe, but at, 
as of this date, when you look at the Tom Brady and, and what he does, and it's not just his athletic ability, but his uh, his his mental capacity and how he can how he can uh, bring his team back, ra- rally up his team, and uh, and and bring them back and and win a game, uh, unbelievable. I mean, that guy is great. He's good. The Patriots are a good team, uh, but I think I think the Rams. Uh, with, with, did you see CJ? Um, I mean, Gurley took the bench because CJ was doing so well. So I, I, it's going to be a great game. I believe it's going to be a great game. Hey, Ed, Clayton, Royden, Dexter, thank you guys for joining us. But uh, it'll be a good game. Um, and like I say every week, you know, don't you know I pick them. Uh, but don't bet based on my pick because it's uh, <laughs> it's not scientific. Uh, it's not based on any kind of uh, scientific analysis. It's just how I feel, what my gut says, and I think the Rams are going to beat the Patriots. Uh, of course, I thought the Chiefs was going to beat the Patriots too. Um, so we we got a couple of issues, a couple of issues. Hey, Angie, Shen, Francis, and Kathy, thank you. Uh, a couple of things. Number one, you get the bad call. You, you get a really bad call. Flagrant passing interference. And I'm talking about the Rams and Saints game. Clearly passing interference. It's not even a close call. I don't think anybody can dispute that. That, that was, a, was, a, was a bad, bad non-call. Uh, you had enough referees around there that, that should have made the call. They didn't make the call. The problem is that the NFL rules, and you know, I, today I downloaded the NFL rule book because I wanted to read. Uh, that's how bored I am now in retirement. Um, hey, Vet, Gule, thanks for coming. Um, w- after the two-minute warning, no one can challenge a call. Now, that is a challengeable call. Uh, it is a challengeable call. And, but, but the rule says after the two-minute warning, there are no more challenges. Now, why is that? What makes it any difference, different in the, in the final two minutes of either a half or a game that a coach cannot uh, throw the challenge flag? Because if they threw the challenge flag, and now don't get me wrong, I, I, I chose the Rams. I want to see the Rams win the Super Bowl. But, you know, I'm also uh, trying to ca- call this thing objectively that had they been able to challenge, then obviously the call would have been reversed, right? The call would have been, the passing interference call would have been good. The ball, is, uh, New Orleans would have had the ball and they would have won the game. So th- this discussion is not about uh, you know why I think the the, the same. No, it, the, what I'm saying is the rules got to be changed. That in fact, and I, for those of you that are on that don't care about football, bear with me for another couple of minutes because uh, we'll get onto some some really good topics. But but it's become a national issue, and you know all of the eye doctors in Louisiana are offering free eye exams to any referee that comes in. I think that's kind of hilarious, and it's true. It's, it's not a joke. But anyway, why not allow the challenge to go at any time? As long as you got a challenge left, and it's I don't care what point of the game. You should be able to call the challenge. You should be able to challenge the referees. It's a human game. Uh, referees are human. Uh, they make mistakes. So allow the correction of a mistake, the human mistake, by allowing them to challenge. So that, that's, that's my take on the Rams and the Saints game and that terrible, terrible, terrible call. Um, I, I will say I watched the post-game interviews with the coach and with uh, Drew Brees. I got to say, Drew Brees is a class act. Uh, and if you haven't watched the post-game interviews from both the coach and uh, Drew, Go to YouTube and just and, and search it. Uh, Drew Brees, you know, yeah, he's on, he said, you know, I only concerned or uh, concern myself with things that I have control over. I don't have control over referees. I do have control over what happened prior. We had many opportunities that we did not execute. Uh, we could have done a better job. Hats off to the Rams. They were tough and they beat us. Uh, what a class act. Now, whether or not he believes that in his heart, I don't know. But I, I got to tell you, it seemed genuine. Um, utmost respect for Drew Brees and the Saints, but nonetheless, it was a bad call, a call, a, a, a situation that could have been remedied if, in fact, the, the rules allowed for a challenge. Uh, so that's it. Rams moves on. Patriots and the Chiefs, uh, another awesome game into overtime. You, you got the, the, the veteran Tom Brady, uh, again, more than, I, I believe, the best quarterback in the history of the game. And then you had this guy, Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes, brand new, young kid. Um, and, and just kept up with, with the Patriots. And, and the, the problem I have, hey, Tumor, how's it going? <clears throat> the problem I have, with again, with the NFL rule, their overtime rule, Mahomes never had an opportunity to come back, right? Patriots get the ball in overtime, they score a touchdown game over, and, the, and Mahomes never had an opportunity 
to show the world. Everybody was waiting to see how he would respond. He never had a chance because the overtime rule says if the person that wins, the team that wins the, the, the coin toss gets the ball first and they score a touchdown, game is over. Well, how the hell is that fair? How the hell is that fair? Yes, Ed, um, uh, Drew Brees is a property owner on Kauai. He, does, uh, he just bought property up at Kukuyula, so he is a part-time resident of Kauai. As a Vikings fan, I laughed when the Saints were complaining. 2009 NFC Championship game, Brett Favre not getting the roughing the passer. Saints are crybabies. You know, again, the, the NFL, the, the rules of the NFL should prevent these types of situations from happening. And all of this would have been, uh, like I said earlier, if they were able to challenge after the two-minute warning, we, we'd, we'd have a different outcome and no one would be able to complain. So um, the problem is that we that as players, we have rules to follow on the field. And if we not, we get penalized. When refs make a bad call, there is no recourse. As a secondary coach for the last 30 years, it was a bad call. Even a player that was covering everybody, even the NFL, even the NFL, and this is my cousin Rick, played ball with UH and been coaching uh, for, for many, for decades. Uh, even the, the, the NFL admitted it was a blown call. But can you imagine how the coach feels? Yeah, you I mean, the New Orleans coach, you lose a game, you got to deal with that defeat with a bad call. And then the NFL boss calls and says, hey, coach, uh, sorry, it was, it, was, uh, it was a bad call. We blew it. <laughs> I mean, how did it make you feel? It didn't make me feel any better. So he should have just shut his mouth, don't call, and deal with it. Um, the way it's just let it go. It's over. And, again, uh, I think Breeze and the coach, uh, amazing the way they handled it. So, anyway. But, but the OT, overtime. Now, in college, you, you go back and forth until you get a winner. Everybody has a chance to come back um, after a score from the other team. And it's not, that doesn't happen in the NFL. Uh, and that, that's pathetic. You, you get a championship game. You, you get one team that goes down because it, it's who wins the coin toss. Really got the advantage. How is that fair in a championship game? So, anyway, uh, I, I anticipate the NFL changing the o- overtime rules, hopefully. Uh, definitely the challenge rule. I think that that to me uh, is just uh, it's just shameful. Hey, Pono, Gary, Alfredo, Kaimana, Jay, Janelle, Sabra, and Heather. Thank you guys for for being on. So anyway, that's it. That's it. That's it. It's uh, like I said, it's a football game. It's it's the the, the top game of the year. It's probably the most watched sporting event except for WrestleMania, the WWE. Now all of you that laugh at me because I always say that the wrestling, professional wrestling, is the only sport left that's not crooked. It's not fixed. And everybody make fun, laugh, ha, 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 ha. Now look, everybody's saying, oh, it's fixed, NFL fixed, NFL fixed. Well, it's not fixed. It's just bad call and no resolution and no opportunity uh, for, for the, 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 the team that got, that are, that's affected to challenge after two minutes. That's the problem. That's what needs to be fixed. And NFL. Um, better get that thing fixed or you're going to end up with some major, 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 major riots. Um, yeah, I, I mean, go Rams. I want to see the Rams beat the, the Patriots. Not because I don't like the Patriots or I hate Brady. A lot of people hate Brady, but uh, he's good. He's, 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 he's the best. And, um, uh, again, I, I, so we'll see, what, we'll see how this thing goes. Bring back Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yes, right. I agree. I agree, Terry. I agree. And The Rock, yeah? Oh, I bet all you girls like see The Rock. Uh, he's here on Kauai, by the way, uh, and I know where he's at. If you, if you, enough money, I might reveal that uh, that information. So, anyway, um, state of the state address yesterday, uh, Governor Ige. Um, interesting, interesting, interesting. A lot of topics. Both games were exciting in overtime. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, yeah, you know, Ige's been in there for four years. He's for his final four years now. Um, interesting governor's election, uh, and and just a couple of things that I wanted to touch on on the on the state of the state because there are a couple of things that he talked about that I was very happy to hear, um, but yet you know a couple of things that were not mentioned in in his entire state of the state. Number one was the rail, no mention of the rail project whatsoever. Yet we know that that rail project is going to affect not only Honolulu but the rest of the state. It already is, and I don't see I don't see that going away. Royal Rumble first. That's right. Sunday Royal Rumble, mm, awesome. Where's Goldberg? Man, he came in, he won the title, and then he uh, retired again. But anyway, back to the state of the state. So a couple of things. The rail, he never talked about rail. Never talked about rail. And he never talked about traffic solutions 
uh, for the Outer Islands. You know, one of the things that's, that's, that frustrates me, hey, Wally, thanks for joining. One of the things that frustrates me about state politics, state government, state legislature, governor's office, whether they all, they all focus on Oahu. They all focus on Honolulu. Granted, they're the biggest tax base. Granted, they're the, the most population. But nonetheless, we all belong to the state. We all pay taxes. We all participate in the elections. And yes, maybe Kauai doesn't really uh, sway the governor's race or whatever. And maybe his, his uh, and I'm talking about the state offices as well and congressional offices, that maybe, you know, the outer islands don't, don't uh, have much of a say in, in, in these guys being elected and reelected. But at the end of the day, um, our traffic issues to our taxpayers, to our citizens, are just as important um, than to the, the person. Are you okay? Go drink some water. Um, she said coffee. Are you going to drink some water? She's getting upset because we're talking about wrestling. Sorry. Um, but anyway, we, we get left out year after year. And yeah, they throw us some bones. They throw us some crumbs. They, yeah, you know. But at the end of the day, they, they do not, nothing in this state of the state. And if you don't believe me, you can download it from the governor's website. And you can read it verbatim. Exactly what he read on his teleprompter, you can pull off the internet. And uh, so no mention of the traffic. No, no. He talked about a bunch of things. He talked about our foundation being strong. Uh, I, I'm not sure what foundation he's talking about. He talked about his accomplishments in the last four years, which really was about, uh, and I'm going to read it because it's, it's what he said. Uh, he was a, in 2015, first state to set 100% renewable energy standard, standard. The most aggressive clean energy goal in the country. Okay, okay, so we set the standard. Accomplishment? No, it's a goal. It's not an accomplishment. 2016, the first state in the nation to enroll firearms owners into a centralized information system. Okay, good. In 2017, we're the first state to enact legislation that aligns with portions of the Paris Accord. Again, environmental law, it's a goal. We, 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 it's a goal. It's not an accomplishment. Yeah, we signed, the, we signed it, but it, it, it's not a goal. It's not an accomplishment. It, we didn't accomplish anything yet. Uh, in 2018, we're the first state to ban pesticides containing chlorophyll. Roundup to protect our children's health and the first in the world to ban certain sunscreens to protect our environment. Okay, I'll give them that. But what are accomplishments as it relates to our education, our homelessness, our traffic, affordable housing? That's, I think, what I was hoping to, uh, to hear at the, at the State of the State. Um, you know, we boast uh, our, our unemployment rate is among the lowest in the country. You know, unemployment, when they, when the way they, 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 they record or the way they report unemployment is, is everyone that's on the, on, the, on the system. But, you know, once you get off of the unemployment system, you've used up all your benefits, and you don't have a job, they don't count you. So you're only counted when you're on the program, when you're collecting unemployment. But once you have exhausted your benefit, you no longer get counted. So... I don't really put much uh, weight on unemployment numbers, but it's a great political tool because you can play with that. Uh, the other thing he talked about is that our visitor industry is moving toward another record-setting year. More tourists, more money for the state, and yet the county suffers, right? We, we, we are stuck with, with taking care of the tourists and the infrastructure and all the amenities that they use. Uh, so, you okay? Sorry. Oh. Anyway, um, so basically, that was how he started his state of the state, and then he went into straight into education. He wants to start a universal statewide high-quality public preschool system where every kid will have an ability to go to preschool for free. I, I love that. You know, uh, 300 public classrooms for pre-kindergarten. In other words, preschool. I love it. I think it's a great thing. How the heck are we going to pay for that? How the heck are we going to pay for that? Um, the, the, before they even think about changing the structure of our schools, they need to audit the Department of Education. They need to, uh, Department of Education needs to be audited. And we need to make that department efficient, free up some resources, and then think about restructuring our schools. Uh, the one they also want to do is move, uh, right now about half the schools in the state are uh, kindergarten through uh, sixth grade, um, and, and then the other half is kindergarten through fifth grade, and then the six, seven, eight go to middle school. And he wants to bring them all under 
K through five, and then six through eight in the middle school. So again, very lofty goals. The problem is, I don't know how we're gonna pay. It's an inefficient department, the Department of Education. I'm talking about the school teachers. I'm not talking about the aides. I'm not talking about the custodians and, and the, no, I'm talking about the upper management of the Department of Education needs to be audited. That, that needs to happen. Hey, hello, John, Dwayne, Nikki, Lynn, Jackie. So before we go out and talking about building three more, 300 more classrooms and beefing up the, the expenses of our DOE, hey, audit the DOE and, and, and figure out where inefficiencies are and make it efficient first. So anyway, that's kind of the plan for education. And I agree, I, you know, I, I, I would agree. And, and there's, there's argument on both sides of the fence. But I tend to agree with the governor that uh, every kid should have the opportunity to go to preschool and get them ready for kindergarten. Uh, I just don't know if the state can afford that right now. Um, and uh, I, I mean, I, I don't believe they can afford it right now. And, and it's a great, great uh, program that I hope he can make happen. Now, remember, what he's talking about is what he wants to see. It still has to go to legislature. The legislature, who is probably the most greediest bunch of people I've ever met in my life, is not going to be freely giving money back to the governor uh, for him to go and, and uh, accomplish his goals. Um, he also talked about homelessness, and he also talked about uh, making great strides. And yes, on Oahu, they've done a lot of good things on Oahu for the homeless communities. They have done nothing here on Kauai. I have, for the last six, seven months, or eight months uh, on the county council, I tried to get the homeless coordinator for the state here on Kauai to give us a briefing about where, what's available, what are the monies available, and how uh, can our people get access to those funds, our homeless community. Uh, he never came, he never showed up, said he was too busy. I sent a second request. We offered to pay his way. He couldn't come. I sent a memo to the governor personally. Please, can we have your homeless coordinator to come to our county council meeting to do a briefing? Never came. Never came. Why? Because what is he going to report? Yeah, we're, we're really focusing on Oahu. And that, that, that's one of the things that really upset me. Uh, you know, they talk about the, the numbers of the homeless have been reduced um, in the last two years. Well, you know, depending on how you count, depending on how you count, if you are like me and you go around, you're around this island a lot, and not just on the highway, but you're in the neighborhoods and in, at the beaches and the parks, then you would agree that the numbers on Kauai anyway aren't decreasing. As I talk to my friends on Oahu, they tell me that the numbers on Oahu doesn't seem to be decreasing, but yet the state has, for the last two years, and they're starting a homeless count again, and I'm, I have no doubt that this year you're going to come up with a new report saying it went down again. Uh, so... I have a problem with that because we're not seeing the results. We are not seeing the results that have been promised. There is absolutely nothing on Kauai in the way of transitional emergency shelters for our homeless. Absolutely nothing. And uh, so he, he talked about his budget, including $35 million for homeless. $35 million ain't going to do squat statewide, but they're focusing again on Oahu. And even that ain't enough to fix this homeless problem on Oahu. So anyway, uh, thank you for letting me vent. But go ahead, feel free to put your comments. I am reading your comments and uh, shut down all illegal B&Bs and vacation rentals. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've been talking about that for a long time, Larry, and, uh, you know, no one, no one seems to, to do anything about it. Uh, in fact, one of the legislators, uh, newly elected legislators on Oahu, is talking about taxing the illegal vacation rental for money. What, I what happens when you go to the legislature, everybody starts to they get, they become money hungry and, uh, and looking for ways to get more money, yet forget about the roots of the problem. And the roots of the problem is, that's one of the big problems, is those B&Bs and those vacation rentals that are coming into our neighborhoods and, and taking away inventory. So absolutely. So uh, one of the things that um, the governor did talk about that I'm very supportive of, and I'm, I'm hoping he can make it happen. Again, he didn't talk much about Kauai or the outer islands, but he did talk about Oahu. $315 million for housing um, over the next two years. Again, when you look at the budget of the state and, and $315 million, um, that is a large amount of money, uh, but is it enough? I mean, and, and it is some, you know, it, at least we're moving 
forward. He's proposing, which is, you know, I, I don't understand, you know, for, for many years, uh, and I don't say this to brag or take any credit, I'm just saying so that you understand that these ideas aren't new. Governor Ige didn't come up with these ideas before the state of the state. These ideas have been floated with the state legislature, with the governor, uh, for a long time, many years, from a lot of county legislators like myself, from our state association. Why isn't the state opening up all that vacant state land? Why isn't the state allowing the uh, state lands to be used for affordable housing? Why isn't Hawaiian homelands producing homes and, and uh, lots for our native Hawaiian community? Why? So this year, uh, in his state of the state, he talks about, and I'm going to quote, he said, how do you make homes afford in Hawaii affordable? I believe you do it by thinking outside the box, by looking at what you do have and not focusing on what you don't have. That's why we'll be submitting legislation to build condominiums for sale on state lands utilizing 99-year leases. Hello. We have been asking for that for a long, long time. We have been begging the state for, for the lands to put affordable housing projects for many, many years. And all of a sudden, it's Mr. Ige's suggestion, it's his idea. Trust me, many of us in the local county councils statewide have been fighting for this for many, many years. We got the land, turn it over to the counties, and put them up. 99-year leases are perfect. It'll never turn into market. It'll always remain affordable for this generation and the next. And it's available. Lands are available. The reason why affordable housing developers cannot develop housing on, in Hawaii is because of the price of the land. So if we have the land, we can, we can turn over the land to affordable housing developers, build up condos, multi-use home, uh, multi, uh, homes, uh, townhomes, uh, and, and the developer or the builder can still turn a profit because he doesn't have to pay for the land. Again, this is not new. This has been ideas tossed by the counties for a long time, went ignored, and all of a sudden, it's a great idea. Well, let's make sure that they make it happen. There's a lot of land, a lot of state land. County doesn't have land, but the state does. And this is an opportunity, and I'm hoping that the legislature will agree with the governor, and I hope the legislature will agree with the budget that will include the monies to make this happen. Um, all right. So the, anyway, in his state of the state, and I'm, again, I'm reading from his, I'm reading from, right from his, his speech, uh, he talked about the examples, the successes, and it's, you know, it's Helimano Wilderness Recreational Area, 2,900 acres. Um, the Trust for Public Land in the state completed purchase of four parcels of land from the Dole Food Company, Oahu, Helimano, Oahu. Uh, we have a plan for future development on Oahu with growth directed to our urban core and along our fixed transit system, AKA the rail. Um, it will uh, this also allows us to initiate discussions with other private landowners who have expressed an interest in developing lands in places like Kaneohe, Oahu, and Mauna Wili, Oahu. Um, nothing in here about Kauai, Maui, uh, you know, uh, nothing in here about pursuing opportunities for housing and public land uh, for the outer islands, all Honolulu-centric. And that needs to change. Uh, and that is where we come in. That is where we're, we come in. You know, we have our local delegation here that we need to hold accountable. We need to make sure that when they go to Honolulu, they are talking uh, for us. They're speaking for us, not for the legislature, uh, but for the people of Kauai. Again, um, he has some preservation environmental uh, goals, which I, you know, I obviously support. Um, but again, nothing about traffic. No money is in his state of the state that references any kind of traffic congestion relief for Kauai. I don't, I, that's all I worry about. I don't really care about the rest. You know, the council, the Big Island, Maui, Oahu, and the, and the, and the citizens, and they, they can focus on that. As far as I'm concerned, we, all of us here, and I know I've got some Honolulu guys on, the, on, the, on this session and some other islands in mainland, I, and there's no offense to them. 
Don't get offended. I'm just saying we as people of Kauai got to hold our delegation accountable so that when they go up there, they're voting for, for issues and, and decisions that's going to make our lives better, not, not the state legislature. So, so, you know, he has a lot of initiatives. Uh, protect our watersheds, excellent. Better manage our oceans, excellent. Um, strengthen invasive species prevention through our biosecurity plan. Double our local food production and achieve 100% renewable energy by 2045. Yeah, great, great, great goals, great goals. 3.9 million uh, over two years for sustainable Hawaii initiatives. Support our biosecurity plan, water shipping. Oh, good, small money, but yet, you know, nonetheless, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a step in the right direction. They're also working with this company, um, Ampere, uh, who has a memo of understanding with Mokulele to deploy an electric airplane uh, on Maui. I don't know about you, I don't know about you, but I would not fly in an electric airplane. Sorry, that's just me. Anyway, um, the other big topic on his agenda is replacing um, outdated correctional center in Kalihi, Oahu. Our jail is in a, in a, is in a flood zone, tsunami zone, it's overcrowded, and you know, uh, prisoners have rights, prisoners should be treated like dogs, and uh, yet they are cramped in, in, in the jail. Two issues. Number one, we have people in jail that shouldn't be in jail. Yeah, you know, nonviolent, you know, uh, they're in there and, and taking a bed or a floor space uh, from a violent one. Uh, 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 you know, we're, 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 we're pre bargaining people down because there's no space in jail. My point is this. Number one, we got to reform the whole system, um, this whole correctional system. And make sure we put the, the violent, aggressive, repeat offenders in there. And the ones that are nonviolent, uh, get them on another track. But the other problem is uh, all of these monies, majority of the money, vast majority of the monies uh, in the state of the state are being routed straight to Honolulu. Granted, like I said, they're, they're the bigger island, they're the, the, the most populated. But yet, hey, we, we got a jail, we got traffic. We got people, we got taxpayers here on Kauai. So understanding that Oahu has needs, but so do we. And I hope somebody from the governor's administration, maybe the governor himself is watching this. I know we got a lot of, a lot of people watch this, this uh, uh, Facebook Live, whether it's the live one or the, or the, the post later. Uh, and now that it's on the YouTube channel, again, if, if you're coming on late, stop by my YouTube channel, Mel Raposo. Subscribe and like it if you can. Subscribe so you'll know when I put a new video up. Uh, just, just go to YouTube, hit the search Mel Raposo, get to my page. Please subscribe so that I can, uh, uh, and whenever we, we, we do a new video, you'll be notified. I will be popping some spontaneous videos, probably starting in February, um, and it'll be pretty cool. Off topic, but is Cocoa Palms a no or no go? Um, I, I, I don't think it's a go. Uh, we talked about this a few weeks ago. I personally don't think I could be wrong. Um, don't have the de the details right now, but that's a, a topic that we'll, we'll I'll, I'll do some more research and get the answers to you next week. Um, yeah, cocoa palms. I believe it's a no go. Um, I've met with those owners on many occasions. I think uh, I think a lot of external factors as well as financing challenges. I don't think it's a go, but that's just my own observation and uh, not based on any kind of uh, information that that's uh, formal right now. How do you feel about not having a commissioner for the Kamehameha Day Parade? <laughs> I don't know what happened. Um, you know, I, I think it's it's I I I think it's sad. I think that's one parade that we really got to hang on to. Not just because of the culture. I think it's vital that we we really embrace our culture. But you know, the kids the kids uh, look forward to that, to see the horses and the beautiful colors and all that. So yeah, I, I uh, you know. I, I don't I'm I'm sad about that I really am and I hope they can get it together, um, you know I, I I just wish I wish they I wish they can I hope they can get it together I want to see that parade I want to see a commissioner uh, that that should happen. How about our Senate president or our mayor? Can they do what can they do for us? Well, you know it's it's again uh, during a campaign I said, you know being the mayor gives you a, a much bigger uh, stand to 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 voice on. You know you 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 your voice is louder than a little council member. So the, the mayor, our Senate president, our representatives all have, uh, uh, have a big play in this, especially our Senate president. My God, he's the president of the Senate. Ron does a great job. I can tell you, 
Ron does a great job getting CIP monies to Kauai and, and, and so forth. But what I'm talking about, and, and it's something, I, and that's the last issue that I'm going to talk about from the from the governor's um, address was the TAT. Um, he, in his budget, in his budget, he is asking that the legislature remove the cap on the transit accommodation tax. Right now, we all know we, we're capped at 103 million. No matter how much the state brings in, and I said earlier tonight today, that the, the, we are seeing a record number of visitors coming to our islands which means we're getting more money into the TAT fund. Yes, they raised the TAT 1% here on Kauai. That money is going straight to the rail. Has, it does not uh, get into the county's uh, accounts. But for the existing TAT, we have a cap. So regardless of how much money comes in from the visitors, we don't get an increase when the state gets the increase. So the governor is, and this is, I support a 1,000%, he wants to remove the cap and put the monies, the percentages back to what they were. Now, this, <laughs> is probably not going to happen because as I stated earlier, the legislature is greedy. This, if we go back to the, what, what, what the, Auditor recommended when they did the audit or when they did the study on the PAT, when they look at the cost sharing of, of the cost that it takes counties to take care of our visitors, they had a recommendation. But if we move forward with the governor's wishes, with, with the, what the governor is recommending, which I support 100%, that's going to hit the state for $380 million. That three hundred eighty is going to be spent, sent back to the, the counties. And the... Uh, House Speaker Psyche already said, basically, uh, I'm going to paraphrase, but he said that cannot happen. We don't have the money. Well, a governor's budget sent over to the legislature is balanced, including that money to come back to the county. So Psyche is just playing his games. Psyche is the ringleader, one of the ringleaders that took away our TAP. I'm not very happy about that. And the legislature agreed, and they put the cap back on and the counties got screwed. So now the governor, um, you know, I, for the last three years, I was at the legislature fighting hard for this removal of the cap. Where was that Ige? Where was anybody? There was nowhere to be found. Again, this is something that is not new. The state association of counties, all my partners throughout the islands went up and testified I got beaten up quite bad up there at the, at the legislature. Myself and uh, Chair um, Valerie from uh, the Big Island because we suggested that the cap not be removed. I mean, that the cap be removed. And the legislature shut us down and continued the cap and took our money. So now the, the, the governor is asking the legislature to remove the cap and give the counties their fair share. Now, he actually says it. I'm going to quote it because I know I, I read it. Let me see if I can find it. He said, in other words, the county's share would rise and fall based on the amount of money collected without any cap on the high side. Fair. This is a fairness. There is a fairness to that formula that speaks volumes, not only about our concern for others, but our, about our willingness to work with the counties as equal partners in moving the state forward. I swear this guy took my speech, found my speeches, and, and copied it. It's a change in the whole notion of revenue sharing whose time has come. Now, the time was there years ago, Governor. It's just that now you're on your last term. You don't need to worry about upsetting anybody. So now you're doing the right thing, and I commend you. And I'm going to be there at the session, at the budget sessions, to back up the governor's position on the TAT when that happens. Because I think it's important, all of us on this call, whether you're from Kauai, Oahu, Maui, I will tell you that when we went up as a state to fight for the fair share, Oahu was in with us. They agreed. So we're not bumping anybody off. We're not taking money away from anybody. What we're doing is we're saying, hey, legislature, let's just give us what we deserve. And, and that is we, all of us, 
We got to call the Senate president. We got to call the representatives. We got to call everyone that we know. I'm sorry, I'm reading the comments over here. What was representatives outnumbered? Yeah, I understand that, Larry, but still, nonetheless, we go down swinging. We don't go down because um, he was a little council member. You had spirit and conviction. <laughs> yeah, I know. We didn't, we didn't get the TAT, though. But, but it's, it's up to all of us to let our representatives know that we deserve fair treatment up there. We deserve to get our fair share of the TAT. You know, that, that's what we got we to gotta, we gotta fight for. The other thing the governor talked about, and he didn't really go into detail, but he talked about a living wage in Hawaii, and he's talking about raising the minimum wage to $15 by 2024. He's basically saying uh, in 2020, it'll go to uh, $11. Right now, it's $10.10. You all know that. Um, he wants to move it up to 11 in 2020, and every year go up another dollar. Um, you know, the gradual increase is the only way to go. You cannot jump a uh, uh, minimum wage from 10, 10 to 15 bucks in a year. You're going to cripple the small businesses. Now, even with the gradual increase, there's going to be some uh, impact to the, the small businesses. Um, he's also offering up to $50,000 tax credits for the businesses that, um, that may be affected. So uh, I don't know yet. I mean, I think that has to be looked at some uh, the numbers. Somebody's got to do a, 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 a model. You know, I know for myself, I have very small business. You know, and one time I had, I think uh, the most, I had like six employees that if the minimum wage had gone up, I, I wouldn't be able to survive. And I think there's a lot of businesses like that. Um, Kalei, you are so right. Everybody's into the, 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 the hourly wage. And I know where you're heading with this. I know you go, where you're heading with this, Kalei. And I, you know what? We're going to do a special segment, Kalei, you and I, on uh, Zoom. And we're going to put that video up for everyone to see. Because I know where you're going with this, and I agree with you. Um, but we're just talking about the, the state of the state. Because we've been programmed, yeah, that we got to go out and go to school, get a job, and, and so forth. And yet, you know, we, we fail to teach our kids entrepreneurship. That, in fact, there is an alternative. You go out and start your own business. Um, so anyway, uh, the $15 an hour increase would, would cripple a lot of businesses. So, you know, I'd love to see an economist go through the numbers, put it into a, a model, and, and extend it out 5, 10, 15 years to see what the impacts would be. Because I, I think, you know, especially in Hawaii, because everything is based off of pay. So every tax and fee, that is Social Security tax, Medicare, all this stuff that the employer has to pay is based off of the minimum wage. I mean, off of the, the pay, the salaries and the wages. So um, it's definitely going to have an impact. It's going to have a, a very big impact. And I think at some point you got to do the analysis and say, is, is it worth the effort? It's very simple to say, yes, bump the minimum wage. Because, yes, I agree, we do not make enough money to survive here in the state. So, you know, yeah, you get your second job or your third job. Wage increase means nothing. Everything will keep rising. Prices keep increasing. Yeah, I, I mean, that's what's going to happen, right? I think the guy from uh, LNL said if, if the increase goes up, the, 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 his bento will go up to $17. Who's going to buy a $17 bento? Not too many people. So they go out of business. I think that's, that's the negative side. That's the con of this proposal. And I think we got to be very careful. And I think uh, more, way more uh, investigation needs to be done. Uh, low income is ninety three thousand. Why not make the wage forty seven dollars? That that's basically what you what, you're almost patronizing the people when you say we're going to give you eleven dollars and we're going to give you twelve dollars. We're going to give you thirteen dollars. You see, that's not going to make a difference. If you're talking about living wage, you're talking about fifty bucks an hour to survive here. It's not going to happen. What happens when you get an entry level position? And I mean, no disrespect. I don't want to demean anybody's position, but let's say you have an entry level position uh, of a dishwasher. Okay, and you know, I, I started this dishwasher, La Luna restaurant, Right Street, many years ago, dishwasher. But when you increase the dishwasher pay, entry level pay, to fifteen dollars, the 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 next upper level pay scale gotta be increased, and the one above that needs to be increased, and the one that so you see what I'm saying, the rippling effect is gonna be uh, very dangerous to to the small businesses and to the, many of the businesses that cannot absorb that. So even with the $50,000 tax credit. Again, the 50000 tax credit per business, that's $50,000 less that the, that the state's going to collect, which is going to impact the revenue. So anyway, uh, it's not as simple as passing a bill, increasing the, the, the uh, minimum wage, and then worrying about how we're going to do with all of these small businesses that close 
and all of their unemployed employees now. Now what are we going to do? So again, it's it's uh, it's more than just a you know the, the right or a few good thing to do because it's not going to cause a, a dollar an hour, two dollars an hour. Yeah, it's going to help some, um, but what's the negative? What's the impact that's going to be to the, the community? Uh, it's it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. So anyway, uh, let's see. Hey, Baron, thanks for joining us. My son just joined on. Ah, okay. So that's the $15 minimum wage. That's going to be interesting. That's going to be very, very interesting. Um, government shutdown. I know we got 15 minutes left. Government shutdown. Um, frustrating. Frustrating. Now the, uh, you know, I, I made a post uh, last week about um, just asking that you take the level-headed people on the Democratic side, you take the level-headed people on the Republican side, and you take the level-headed people from the White House. So you leave out Trump, you leave out Pelosi, you leave out all of these people, and you get those, you reach down until you can find Congress people that are genuine and legitimate, get them in a room, and discuss how we can end the shutdown. Now, I just read before we went online, that now the House Democrats have, have agreed to a package, even if they got to go up to $5.7 billion to open the government immediately. However, however, the $5.7 billion cannot be used for a wall. The discussion has come around a wall, not border security, but a wall. And uh, uh, some people, after they read my post, was, was you know, trying to get, Mel, do you support the wall or not? It's not about the wall. This, the whole topic of my post was, hey, let's, let's put this ridiculous fifth grade nonsense aside, find some people with some genuineness in Congress, if there are any, I don't know, and get them in a room and figure out a way how we can open this government, get our people paid. I said, for the day, just for a day, the people that are in this room, forget about the wall, forget about Russia, forget about Syria, and anything else, just focus on how we can get this government started, I mean, reopened, and how we can get our people paid. How you, how these guys can sleep at night, making $173,000 a year, free medical, free everything, perks up the yin-yang, how do they go home and sleep at night knowing that some people are never going to paycheck for a month? How can they go home and sleep? I mean, what, they drink themselves to sleep? I don't get it. How do you go home knowing, man, you know, I, you know, be, because of a wall? Because I don't want the wall. And on the other side is, we want the wall. So we're going to fight about this wall. And in the meantime, all our hardworking people are going to starve. That, that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to sleep good tonight because I don't care. You know, this is my, my thing. And I, I hope one of my videos go viral nationwide. I really hope that parts of my video go viral, especially this one, what I'm about to say. Every single voting American should commit. We should commit. Hey, how's it? Hey, Jayla, how are you? Every single one of us should commit that if, in fact, they don't open this government by today at 4.30, which is already passed, then we are going to vote Sub for someone else. So this message is for you, Maisie, Tulsi, all of you, our delegation, statewide, the state of Hawaii, we got to vote for Congress, for our senators and our House members, shots, all of you. If you cannot fix this, then we're going to vote for that, whoever else runs. We're just going to vote for somebody else. And we're going to give someone else a chance. This got to be state, uh, nationwide. All of the Pelosi's, all of these people, Every single one of them, Democrats, Republicans, I don't care what side. But the country got to make a stand and take a stand. Let these people know that if you cannot fix this problem, we're going to let somebody else try. And we're going to replace every single one of you, including the president. Including the president. So this is ridiculous. How shame. Uh, it, it's embarrassing. And they can sit on a TV and look at funny faces and call each other names. And not give a damn about our people who are not getting paid. People who cannot buy the medication. You know, we think about TSA workers. Ah, you know, that's there. You know, 
the ones we used with, you know, they're all big, they're young. No, we're talking about a bunch of people from all ages working for the federal government. It ain't getting paid. So this is the message. Fix it or you're gone. But we on Kauai cannot do that. This has to go viral. This has to go nationwide. Fix it or we're going to vote for someone else. I don't care who. We'll find the next competent person and we'll vote them in and we'll give them a shot. Because this Congress and this president is oil and water. Oil and water. And we cannot continue to sit back and say, oh, put things. Oh, let's do a GoFundMe. You know, that's all great. And I applaud everybody. Hats off to Jenny Waroli's daughter um, going out and collecting money for gift cards for our, our uh, unemployed or our, our non paid, not unemployed. They're employed, they're not getting paid uh, workers. Th this has become a fifth grade spat that the fifth graders would have resolved by now. They would have resolved this by now with the help, a little bit of help from the teachers, parents. But no one in Congress right now is listening to anyone. Uh, you know, now, retired, I work at night, so I get during the day. I watch CNN. I, I flip through the channels. I watch the Republican channel, Democrat channel. It's shame. It's, it's funny. It's too bad it's real. Too bad it's, it's, it's happening. Because this, this would make a great movie. It would be a comedy because no one would believe that this is actually happening. But it is. And people are getting hurt. People are going to die because it is. Because our stupid people in Congress are so egotistical and greedy and, and, and uh, cannot, cannot get over it. So, yeah, this is the message to every single one, including our beautiful, cute Hawaii delegation. Get it done or we're voting for someone else. That simple. You know. Relationships. You know, I get personal relationships with all of all, all our congressional people. Everyone I've got I got personal relationships and I have professional relationships. So what I am talking about today is my professional relationships. It's not personal. Nothing is personal. But if you went to the mechanic shop and the mechanic and the and the assistant kept arguing about your car where two mechanics kept arguing because both of them had a different remedy, you would, leave, you would take that car to someplace else. And if I owned that child, fire both of them. See, we cannot, we, the only opportunity we have to fire our Congress people is the election. So that's what we do. Spread the word. Get it done, or we're going to vote for the next person, period. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. Call governor. Cali governor is not listening to Trump and said he will give their unpaid government workers unemployment. Uh, well, God bless the governor of California. Um, you know, it'd be nice for us to do something like that. I don't know the mechanics of how unemployment works. Uh, maybe government, maybe California's got a lot of money. That's, you know, that's one hell of a solution, though. I got to tell you, thanks, Francine, for that. I mean, I, Governor Ige, I know somebody's listening that knows him. Maybe that's an option. Maybe that's an option. And you're not our mayor yet, Terry. Okay. Self-centered politicians. Kathy, thanks for joining us. We've got a bunch of people on, and we only got a few more minutes. So, um, you know, I, I just, I'd like to hear what you guys think. I know some of you post comments, but uh, some of you don't want to post because you don't like anybody else. See, shoot me a message, private message, if you guys want us to talk about anything uh, uh, on, on Wednesdays. This is every Wednesday, 5.30 to 6.30. And, again, I, I spoke of this earlier. I have a YouTube channel, Mel Raposo. Just search Mel Raposo on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel so you get notified every time I do a new video. I'll be doing more videos um, for the channel, and it'll be covering all kinds of topics. Um, we'll be using a different format. We're going to continue to live, the Facebook Live on Wednesdays, but we'll be doing other videos using another format where I'll be able to have someone come on with me remotely, and we can have discussions on whatever you guys want to discuss, uh, not just football. My email is melraposo at gmail.com, melraposo at gmail.com. That's the best way. Uh, you know, or, or, again, on Facebook, you can private message and, and you shoot me the message. Um, but, you know, we, we got to get a handle on this stuff. And, and I tell you, uh, the more and more now as a civilian outside looking in, um, 
I really believe that we as a unit, now as a politician, as a council member, I really wanted to get involved. Um, that's how Facebook Live started. I really wanted to get involved with the people. I wanted the communication. I enjoyed when people like Larry Ruda and Ed McDowell, all of you guys, uh, many of you on here, stayed in communication. Let me know. The Shadow, Jerome Freitas, what an awesome job he does. I met with him every two weeks. He gave me all the load on him. What, what are the safety issues, which we then put across to the, the administration. Um, so we as a, as a, as a unit got to keep our elected officials informed of what we want. You know, we assume that the elected officials know it all when they don't. They only know what they know, and they don't know what they don't know. So we as a unit got to, got to keep them informed of what we want. Uh, run for governor. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, thank you. I, I, you know, I, I, no, you know, I, I, again, we, I, I think I like it better on this side, mobilizing the troops, getting the facts, getting the issues, getting everybody informed and educated, coming up with a package and, and having that brought up to the legislature. Um, I mean, it made no difference that I was a council chair. You know, I was a council chair going up to the legislator, fighting for the people of Kauai. They didn't listen. So if they don't listen to the council chair, then I don't have to be a council chair. Because again, as a citizen, I get the same right to go up to the legislative hearings, to the budget hearings, to the finance hearings, and, and, and share the same concerns. So that's the plan. Keith, Chelsea, Mariah, thank you guys for joining us. Um, I did today, the, we had a, the financial audit for the county was on. Um, I watched a little bit of it this morning. Um, some some kind of serious problems, uh, serious problems in our county. I don't have time to go into it today. Hopefully, we'll cover it next week. But yeah, some uh, you know some basic accounting issues. Accounts not being reconciled since January of two thousand, uh, November of two thousand and seventeen. Unacceptable. So you know it's online. You can go to the audit. You can read the results. Um, pretty interesting stuff. A lot of work. The new administration has a lot of work to do to clean up what was left behind. Um, and based on today's audit, it was probably the worst audit I've ever seen in all my time on the council as far as the performance of the county financially. So, um, yeah, it's curious. I'm curious to see how the new administration, the new council is going to deal with it. Uh, I can guarantee you that I'll be uh, staying on top of it because there's some serious stuff, financial errors that were made that need to be cleaned up right away. A Hawaii TSA employee who survived cancer has had to cancel his doctor checkup because he can no longer afford them after missing three paychecks. Uh, you know, John, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Um, you know, I, again, it, it just it just breaks my heart when I think about it. When I think about uh, right now, what is it now? It's six, so it's probably eleven twenty eight right now in Washington D.C. And I can guarantee you, a bunch of those guys are sipping wine in some fine establishment, enjoying their night. And yet, your, your buddy or a TSA employee had to cancel his doctor visit because he doesn't have enough money because he hasn't gotten paid for a month. Three paychecks. Um, no, I'm not going to talk about the Patriot Super Bowl party because it's not going to be very well attended. Um, I will talk about the Rams party next week, um, the Rams victory party. That'll be a, a, an awesome. Uh, I'm coming to the party. Yeah, good. It'll be you and Raleen. <laughs> one more thing. One more thing. Um, and uh, it's 6.28, I get two minutes. This is just something I thought was really interesting. Because, you know, we've been talking, we've been watching about the Kealoha scandal in Honolulu. Now it's spread into the county, uh, Corp Council, the attorney for the county on Oahu. Well, you know, they just, uh, Frank Lyon, uh, the Lyon Associates, whatever, they're consulting, or con consulting con construction company, whatever, engineering firm, the Lyon Group, I think it's called. Frank Lyon. He just pled guilty to bribery uh, on Oahu. And so far, what they found was he paid $240,000 to a state employee in return for a $2.5 million contract, $132,000 for um, services <clears throat> that was never provided, $200,000 to a Micronesian official uh, for $7.8 million in contracts. And he pled guilty, facing five years in federal prison and $250,000 in fines. But the interesting part and the fun part I think he is going to cooperate with the federal 
authorities. So this is going to go a lot longer. And there's a lot of people sitting down right now worried to death because he is going to cooperate with the feds, meaning he's going to sing, meaning a lot of people are going to get target letters. So it's 6.30, people. It's a great hour. Thank you, folks, so much again every Wednesday, <clears throat> 5.30 to 6.30. Don't forget, go to YouTube right now, Google or search Mel Raposo, and uh, subscribe to the channel so we can get you on every, every single um, video we put up. You'll get notified. Thank you, guys, all. Janet. I hope you're feeling better. We're done, but you can go back and watch the replay. Love you guys. God bless. We'll see you guys next week. Aloha.